What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of D5 Render version 2.8. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so D5 Render has been rolling out a bunch of new versions this year with a bunch of new features that are really exciting. And version 2.8 is no exception. So you can learn more about what's new in D5 Render 2.8 um, by going to this page right here, which basically goes through all of the different things that they've added in this version. You can also access that at least right now by just clicking on this page on the D5 launcher in order to get a hold or get to this page. All right, so one of the biggest things that I think D5 Render is doing is they're actually adding useful AI tools to their program and they're they're kind of in beta but they're still really interesting tools so we're going to use the garden restaurant model we'll go ahead and pick maybe like this view right here but let's say that we were to render an image so let's go up here to our uh, image options and let's render this image out so we'll just leave all these settings settings as are we'll click on render all right so notice how now if you run a render there's an option for AI Enhancer. And so if you click on this, what this is going to do is it's gonna allow you to pick a portion of your render. So let's say for example, that we wanted to enhance a certain part of your model. So notice how when I click on this, it takes a second, but it's gonna go through and it's going to find different parts of your model that you can click on. So. For example, say that I wanted to work on my table and notice how this isn't perfect by any means. It's picking out these pieces based on what it thinks are going to be good. But let's say we were to pick a couple of these wood areas to enhance like this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on enhance. What it's gonna come in and do is it's gonna apply an AI enhancement to this in order to try to enhance the details of these areas. And so if you look at this, this actually did a pretty decent job. So if we make this bigger, if you look on the before and then the after, this actually did come in here and add additional wood grain materials to this object. So you can see the difference right here. And notice how the wood, especially up near the top, actually looks a lot better. So this actually came in here and did a really good job of enhancing that particular area of our model. So we could do the same thing, picking out like, and so you can see the preview right here, but then you could also click in the enhancement tasks right here. And with this scene selected, you can click on the option to enhance again in order to enhance something else. And notice how you can use this button in order to add or remove. So you can click in here to do add, or you can click in here to remove in order to remove objects. But let's say we were to pick these sofas out like this, and you can pick the individual pillows or at least some of them just by clicking on them. And we'll go ahead and give this a strong weight right here. And we'll click on the button for enhance. So it's going to enhance these areas right here with additional detail. And so again, if you click on this slider, notice how it's come in here and it's giving you much better detail on these pillows right here, as well as on the sofa itself. So this is actually very effective in what it's able to do to add additional detail to your model. I'm actually really impressed with this. And then once you're done, notice how it's saving these inside of your scene, but you can click on the option to download the upscaled version of your scene onto your computer. And so you can kind of see toggling back and forth between these, the difference in quality between this render and this render. And while it is just kind of like background details to a certain degree, I think this has done a really good job and it's actually a really good AI tool for enhancing parts of your renders. Now, one thing I wish, and maybe I'm just doing it wrong, is I do wish that you could kind of pick things up without using the automated picking of the different areas right here, because obviously, right, I don't want this table to be in here with these plants. I mean, I guess I could just enhance the whole thing, but it would be nice to be able to pick just like an area, which I don't think that you can do right now. I think it's just the automated partitions um, that you can use in here, but it's still a pretty cool tool. And so in addition, they've also 
added some additional styles to text to 3D. So you can access text to 3D by clicking on this right here. I'm not sure if this is a pro only feature, but let's say that we wanted to create, I need to create a bronze horse model in a Western style similar to Frederick Remington right here. And you've got your generated styles in here. You've got the PBR. I'm just going to click on auto, but if you click on generate, it's going to go through and it's going to try to generate a model. All right. And so if you look at this, it's generated four models and you can click on this in order to download it into your actual model right here. And then you can click so we're going to go ahead and we're going to scale this down like this, but while it's obviously not a super detailed model, the fact that you can come in here and use AI in order to generate something like this, I think is a uh, very cool. And it actually looks pretty good, especially kind of in the background with kind of like the depth of field options that they have in here. So, We'll toggle our depth of field off so you can see it um, in a little more depth, but this was created using an AI prompt and it is definitely kind of puffy, but um, it is something that you could actually use in the background of your model, which again, I think is a really cool development. And so they've also added a cool new effect, which is the uh, semi-transparent effect for transparent materials. So basically that works is say, see, basically how that works is say we have a custom material in here. We'll give it a base color of something, maybe like this reddish color right here. Okay, and so basically this is gonna apply to your transparent materials. And if you scroll down, you're gonna look for the advanced settings and your opacity right here. If you check the box for affected by light and you bring your opacity up, notice what this is gonna do is this is gonna make this kind of a semi-transparent material, uh, meaning that it's more of a solid material, but it's going to let things like light through. So notice how if I bump my opacity up like this, um, this is still going to give me that semi-transparent material. And you can click, and again, that's only gonna show up if you click on this, uh, this advanced settings right here. But what that's gonna do is, let's say we added a light on the back side. So let's add just a point light right here. We'll move it up a little bit. Then scroll down this light say that it has a color of maybe like a blue so we're gonna go to RGB there we go something like this and we're gonna bring that intensity way up but notice how you're able to see the blue color through this semi-transparent material so you can use this to create semi-transparent materials inside of your model that kind of show things through them and again even if we were to bump our opacity up you're still gonna see some of that kind of like sneaking through in here like this. Where if you were to uncheck the box for affected by light, notice how this is just going to act as like a glass material. All right, so next up is a function that I actually think is really cool, which is the ability to um, use a opacity map with a displacement material. So say that, for example, you wanted to create some kind of a fence or surface using the surface right here. Well, what you can do is you can go down to the displacement material and you can add an opacity map. And so in this case, what I've done is I've downloaded this material right here, which is a metal weave material off of a, this is 3dtextures.me. Um, but if we take that base color map, we're just gonna drop that in, that's just gonna look something like this, right? Not super interesting, but because we have an opacity map slot, we can take the opacity map for that metal weave and drop it in here and you can make it look like an actual fence. And so there's a height option right now, but it doesn't look very good. However, because this object actually came with a height map, right? So if I bring that metal weave height map in here, and then I adjust this, notice how this is actually going to make this look like a three-dimensional fence material that you can actually see through from both sides. You can use this in order to really quickly create things like fences. And then you could also come in here and adjust things like the size right, of that mesh, 
like this. So you can create really realistic looking meshes that you can actually see through inside of D5 Render. And notice if I click off of it, it looks a lot better, um, but you can use this in order to really quickly create meshes using just materials rather than geometry. So they've also added some functions for sunlight caustics, which honestly, I haven't quite figured this one out yet. I don't do a whole lot of like water rendering anyway, um, but basically what it's gonna do is it's going to affect the way that the light um, goes through and refracts in water. So it can create more realistic water. Um, like I said, I've not 100% gotten this one figured out yet, but it is in there if you do a bunch of water rendering. All right, so they've also added an interesting effect to their HDRI skies. So if we click on, we'll pick maybe this partly sunny right here, which is gonna put kind of a new HDRI in here. Um, if you scroll down, there's an option in here for sky color. And what the sky color is going to do is it's going to allow you to affect either the light coming off of this, right? So you can pick skylight only or the background only or both by clicking on all. But notice how I can use this to adjust the hue and the saturation of that sky right here. Now, one kind of interesting thing is if you were just to pick the skylight only, note that this is only affecting the light coming off of this skylight, but not the actual image itself, which could be extremely valuable, I think, um, if you do want to kind of adjust some of the color temperature coming off of the lighting in here. Um, I think that's definitely an interesting function. Note that you can right click on these in order to um, reset them. And so you could also just pick the background only. So what that's gonna do is that's going to affect um, the color of that background. So you could bring this color um, to more of a blue, like a darker blue, but then you could adjust your saturation in order to get different results. And you can set that to affect only your, your background, or you can set it to affect the lighting as well as the image itself. So that's kind of an interesting twist on HDRI images for lighting. All right, so they've also added the ability to preview the ambient occlusion um, that can be overlaid in your images in your actual viewport. So you can do that by going into the effect settings right here, scroll down, notice how you can check the box for ambient occlusion, right? And I'm gonna uncheck the overlay for a second. Well, notice how when you check the box for ambient occlusion, it's just going to show you the ambient occlusion, which is basically like the highlighting that's added in the crevices, right? So you can move this up and down like this um, in order to see that. And you can kind of see where it's going to add that ambient occlusion. Well, now there's a box you can check for AO overlay in preview where you can actually see the ambient occlusion that's going to show up in your scene um, using using this checkbox right here you can actually see it in your viewport and notice how you can see what this is going to do by dragging this up and down right and you can also adjust the strength of that ambient over occlusion overview. So you can use this in order to preview that ambient occlusion inside of your viewport. And so if you're a Rhino user or a Vectorworks user, they now have live sync plugins for both of those so that you can sync your models quickly between those two different programs. So if you do use those programs for your modeling, you've now got a great link in there for that. So they've also made some improvements to the scatter system. So first off, you've got the cull effect, which basically allows you to take a scatter system. So see, I've got this one right here. I'm going to adjust the noise a little bit more, but close enough. We've got a scatter system on this surface right here, which is adding grass. And so what we can do within that scatter system is if you select it, go down to effects and add a cull, what you can do is you can pick a model, click on create cull effect right here. And then within that effect, you can adjust the range at, what that, at which that cull is happening. And so notice what this is doing is this is culling objects where this other model object is. And you can adjust it to have some fall off if you want. So notice how, for example, I could bring my cull range way down, but then I could adjust my fall off up. And you can use this to like partially remove this. So you could use this um, if you wanted to create like dirt roads or things like that on surfaces. Um, there's a lot of uses for being able to cull out materials. Note that you could also hide this object right here. And then this is just going to show up as a cull area. And then if you move this, right, so if I drag it over right here, and then I re-click on the scatter system, it's going to tell me that the scatter has been changed and ask if I want to regenerate it. I'm going to say yes, and it's going to adjust that cull based on that new location of that object. And so they've also added the ability, if you have a scatter system that you like, 
um, you can click on this option right here and save it to your space in D5 Studio, right? So notice how we could set this. We could pick whatever folder we want to. So in this case, I don't really have a folder selected, but we could just call this grass scatter and you can save it and then you can access that scatter later. So what you can do is you can set up presets that you like, save them to your studio, and then access them in a future model. And notice how that grass scatter is going to show up right here. And so they've also added some additional model library items. So things like there's some construction site models, um, which include construction workers, um, additional outdoor equipment, other things like that, as well as a new semi-transparent glass material, or actually four of them. Um, and then also some scatter presets for the scatter library. So overall, uh, pretty much as usual and kind of as expected, very feature packed new version. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this new version. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.